Yes, Good afternoon, one and all. As William Shakespeare says, all things are ready if our mind be so. I, Sanket Divan, Assistant Professor, Department of BBA, feel exceptionally lucky to extend you all a very warm welcome on behalf of SSM Ave College, which in association with NAC has organized seven day webinar on the topic of institutional approach towards NAC accreditation. I welcome all with a great belief that the session will be informative as intended. It is initiated by IQAC SSM Ave College. To start with, there will be seven different sessions and real life case study conducted particularly for every criteria by seven multiple resource persons. Before starting the session, I would request everyone to follow the guidelines. On joining this session, participants will have to mute your audio and video. If you wish to ask any questions, kindly use the chat box. Please check the technical configurations before you start. And kindly use headphones or earphones for better audio. I hope the sessions will help you in understanding the approaches further better. Now I would like to request HOD of BCOM department and coordinator IQAC, Dr. Nagraj MS, to welcome the gathering. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sanket. Distinguished chief guest, resource persons, people, uh, principal, director, IQAC coordinators across the country, knowledgeable delegates, heads of various departments, coordinators, faculty members, research scholars, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to the seven-day national level webinar on the topic, Revised Assessment and Accreditation of NAC, Changes and Challenges, hosted by Shivananda Sharma Memorial RV College, Bangalore, in association with National Assessment and Accreditation Council, NAC. I, Dr. Nagraj, Head of the Department of Commerce and Coordinator IQAC, on behalf of SSM RV College, would like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone for gracing this occasion. Education is the most important pillar of the nation for its development. As a result, the excellence and relevance of program offered by the universities and colleges must have standards. As, it, as in every arena of academic pursuit, the method of improving quality has a predefined set of measures. Colleges must find and recognize additional requirements to satisfy them at par with global standards. This is where the role of an accreditation body like NAC brings in best in every institution and help the institutions grow across research, innovation, student success, governance, societal commitments, and more. In the light of the above, NAC's certification is a measure to evaluate and then guarantee a standard of education provided in higher education across the nation. NAC accreditation focuses on improving the quality parameters of the education. College with its accreditation fall under the category that offer quality education to students. The main purpose of the National, and Assessment, National Assessment and Accreditation Council for conducting accreditations in universities and higher educational institutions is to create understanding about the status of quality education across the country and create a pathway for upgradation. Keeping this in mind, IQAC of SSMRV College is organizing a seven-day national level webinar on the said topic. The webinar offers an opportunity to the HEI and its stakeholder to interact with academician, NAC uh, personnel who are the experts in different NAC criteria. I am extremely happy to welcome the chief guest of this webinar, Dr. Lina Gahane, Deputy Advisor, NAC. It's an admirable moment for our institution to have your presence in today's event. Welcome, madam. I, on behalf of the institution, extend an earnest welcome to our today's resource person, Dr. Madhukar B.S., former advisor NAC and also the external member of IQAC of our college. Delighted to have you, sir. Welcome, sir. 
It's with great pleasure I welcome our respected principal, Dr. S. Anil Kumar, who is a true spirit behind all our initiatives. Thanks for your endless support extended and a warm welcome to you, sir. I am delighted to welcome Dr. Geeta R., Director, SSMRV College, who has been a source of guidance in implementation of all our ideas. A warm welcome to you, madam. I am pleased to welcome all the delegates from different places of India who have taken time to be a part of this webinar. It's an opportunity to welcome Mr. Gokul, event coordinator and IQAC member along with his team who has coordinated this webinar. I am pleased to welcome all HODs of various departments, academic coordinators, all my teaching and non-teaching staff. Once again, a warm welcome to all. Let's hope and wish to have an enriching session for the next seven days. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was indeed a warm gesture. Now I would like to request Dr. Padma C, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, to introduce our Honorable Principal to the session. Uh, thank you, Sanket, sir. A good afternoon to all. Leadership is in unlocking people's potential to become better. With this quote, I would like to introduce our beloved principal, Dr. S. Anil Kumar. Dr. S. Anil Kumar is the principal of SSMRV College. He is a man of distinct vision, fountain of illuminating ideas. He is a leader, a visioner, an accommodation, and able administrator. Dr. S. Anil Kumar is a visionary leader who works passionately to revamp the education system and has developed a unique model called 360 Education for Wholeness model with the six dimensional approaches that cater to the holistic development of an individual. He has been a popular teacher among the faculty and students and has had many innovations in the field of education. He has an academic experience of over four decades in the field of commerce and management, both at UG and PG level. In recognition of his contribution to the field of commerce and management, he has been awarded honorary delete from the University of Panama, US. He has more than 21 years of research experience. He is recognized guide for many university for MPhil and PhD. He has guided five PhDs and 31 MPhil projects. He is a renowned author and has written 25 books in various subjects of commerce. He has been doing various UGC-sponsored projects. Dr. Kumar has also published many research articles in many reputed journals. He has presented papers in national and international conferences. To mention a few, Griffith University in Australia, Harvard University in Boston, USA, and so on. He has been an elected academic council member of Bangalore University and a member of tourism committee of FKCCI. He has been the chairman of board of studies and board of examination of Bangalore University and other universities. He is the member of NAC pair team. The reflection of his hard work and commitment has transformed into various awards, such as in recognition of dedicated service as a teacher conferred by His Excellency Dr. Hansaraj Bharatwaj, the then governor of Karnataka, organized by Rotary Bangalore South and Karnataka Civil Defense Corps. Dr. Abdul Kalam Gold Medal for his contribution to education and research awarded by Global Economic Progress and Research Association, New Delhi. He has been awarded for achieving excellence in education from Rashtriya Shikshana Samiti Trust. Dr. Kumar also received a Best Faculty Award for the year of 2021 from the Vivekananda College, Tirchengodu, Tamil Nadu. 
He received Lifetime Achievement Award from Novel Research Academy, Puducherry. He has been an NCC under officer and has won the Best Candidate Award. He also received the Guru Vashishta Award 2022 by Dayanand Sohar Business School. He also facilitated for his work by MS Ramaya Foundation, the occasion of Teacher's Day. Coming back to his key focus area with SSMRV, his academic innovations like the 360 degree education for a fullness model with a six dimensional approach. Setting, setting up of 40 academic and co-curriculum clubs for holistic development of students. Introduction of skill integrator learning program with the emerging technologies. Introduce of work integrated learning program. Establishment of corporate labs, innovative teaching learning pedagogies, international collaborations, establishment of simulation labs for skill enhancement and more. The direct impact of same was over our college getting an A grade by NAT for the first time during the third accreditation cycle. We are proud to mention that our students got many ranks and gold medals in university examinations. SSMRV College has been ranked among to top colleges in India under various categories under India Today, MDRD Best College Survey from 2017 onwards. You are an inspiration to students and all the teachers. Now, I call upon our principal, Dr. S. Anil Kumar, sir, to bestow as dynamic word of knowledge. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Padma. Uh, good afternoon. I'm very happy uh, to welcome once again uh, all the participants and uh, the chief guest of uh, today's program, Dr. Lina Gahani, and the resource person of uh, today's session, Dr. Madhukar B.S., for uh, this today's uh, session. SSMRB College uh, is uh, very uh, fortunate and very happy to uh, associate with uh, NAC in organizing a uh, seven-day webinar on revised uh, accreditation, uh, uh, accreditation method, changes and policies. And uh, we are uh, really happy. Our participants are uh, around 414 participants have registered uh, to, uh, for this program. Uh, from different uh, states, about 10 states. So it shows the kind of uh, the, the ne necessity for such uh, a webinar uh, because it, this is the need of the hour uh, for most of the institutions to know more about the changes which are taking place in the uh, accreditation process. So we have uh, most of the resource persons from uh, NAC itself. So it, there will be a direct connect from uh, NAC to the participants and the colleges uh, who are going for uh, uh, NAC accreditations in the future. So this is a, a, an effort from our institution. And uh, I really uh, appreciate and uh, thank NAC for associating and helping us in many ways. And also, I would like to appreciate the IQAC team of uh, SSMRB College who have organized in this particular event. Uh, appreciate the initiative taken by the program uh, officer, um, Professor Gokul, and uh, his entire uh, team. So once again, I would like to uh, welcome all the uh, uh, participants and especially the chief guest of today's uh, program, Dr. Lena Gahane, Madam, and also the resource uh, uh, Lena Gahane, Madam, who, who is a deputy advisor of NAC, and the resource person of today's program, uh, Dr. Madhukar B.S., former advisor, NAC, who is also uh, the uh, external member of uh, IQAC of SSM RV College. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, sir. I would now like to request Ms. Geeta Jiel, sorry, Ms. Smita Jiel, Assistant Professor, Department of English, to introduce our Honorable Director, Dr. Geeta R. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to introduce Dr. Geeta R to the session. Dr. Geeta has a career span of 18 years as an academician and has had brief stints as an entrepreneur too. She specialized in OB, HRM, leadership development, strategic talent management, knowledge management, business sustainability, diversity and inclusion and other related areas. Our unique abilities and strengths as in professional are reflected by an exclusive professional experience in analytical skills, mentoring, lecturing and academic publishing. She is a strong education professional with a PhD focused in digital HRM from the University of Mysore and a postgraduate program in data science and business analytics from the University of Texas at Austin and Great Lakes. She has 30 research publications to her credit and is acknowledged among the top 10% of the authors globally on SSRN managed by Elsevier. Dr. Geeta received Bharat Education Excellence Award 2021 under Kalpa Acharya category for her contribution to the field of research. She was also conferred an award in recognition of her contributions to the field of business and management studies in April 2019 by DDM India on the Move. Besides these, she has won Best Paper Awards in various international and national conferences hosted across India, the most recent one being in 2022 at an international conference organized by IIT Rorke. Dr. Geeta served as member of BOE, VTU, and member of BOS, DSU. She has also served as a member of the Board of Studies of reputed B-schools like Alliance University and Garden City University. She has delivered around 30 FDPs, webinars, and guest talks in reputed B schools like St. Joseph's College Bangalore, DSI Group, ISBR, AIMS, Hindustan Business Academy, Koshi's Group of Institutions, and several others across India. She served as managing editor of PIG ARCM, International Journal with ISSN, and bought out two volumes of the journal. There is also the editorial member of Sam Yoga, ARSEAM, and a few other reputed journals. Served as peer reviewer for international journals, Canadian Journal of Management and Sustainability, and ARSEAM. Besides these, she's associated with professional associations and NGOs like NHRDN, SHRM, and SRCM. Prior to her current assignment with SSMRV as professor and director, she has worked with the Christ University, Dayanand Sagar Academy of Technology and Management, Alliance University, and RJSIM. Under her able leadership, an industry-sponsored innovation lab and VTU Research Center were established at DSATM. She also works as an independent research and management consultant and SME for a few reputed companies, startups, and a leading tech firm. Welcome, ma'am. I now request you to address the session.
गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन कैन यू हियर मी गुड आफ्टरनून कैन या ओके थैंक यू एमिनेंट चीफ गेस्ट ऑफ द डे या डॉक्टर लीना गहाने डॉक्टर मधुका बी एस द रिसोर्स पर्सन ऑफ द डे इट्स अ हॉनर एंड प्रिविलेज टू बी पार्ट ऑफ द इनॉग्रल फंक्शन ऑफ दिस a uh, seven day national level event and we really happy to have all of you i'm sure uh, there is a significant change in the landscape of higher education system these days there are close to 42000 plus colleges across the country uh, which are uh, affiliated universities um, which number in around 1070 and so in this land, there is uh, several challenges which have come up of late especially post pandemic we see that many new strategic initiatives have been launched by uh, the higher education system in india we have seen that we have the digital university which has come up and then we have academic uh, bank of credits which has come this poses new challenges to educational institutions uh, with the implementation with the nep 2020 implementation these challenges are again uh, going to uh, uh, expand further and i think in this context it is very very important for higher educational institutions to ensure quality sustenance and also to see that because students have an option uh, for multiple entries and exits as we all are aware under the nep 2020 so we do we have to gear up and maintain the quality standard standards within the academic institutions which is very essential and in this in this light in light of this these changes the government of india has been uh, bringing in Uh, several new initiatives now we know that we have apart from uh, moocs massive open online courses we have corporate open online courses and also we have spocs uh, which are again specific open online courses which are all coming up and uh, the in, at the global level we have universities which are offering high quality education at um, minimal cost so all these are posing new challenge challenges to us and nac has um, rightly in the revised accreditation framework emphasized on bringing in more and more quality initiatives to ensure that we get up to this uh, to meet the standards of the new um, in, uh, of the evolving ecosystem in higher education i think this seminar would definitely enlighten all the delegates who have taken out the valuable time to be part of this event wish you all an enriching experience thank you and sorry for the inconvenience due to technical thank you thank you ma'am that was very informative it gives me immense pleasure to welcome today's chief guest dr leena gahane for the session now i would like to request mr shukumar assistant professor department of commerce to introduce today's chief guest over to you sir thank you sanjeev sir mahatriya ra once said i quote transition is never easy but without transition there is no evolution there is no growth within your comfort zone i am quote good afternoon all it's my honor and privilege to able to introduce to you dr leena govind rahane dr leena go Govind Gahane is working as deputy advisor in NAC Bangalore. Dr. Lena is a professor of physics with teaching and research experience for 22 years at Anjuman College of Engineering and Technology Nagpur. She has held the responsibility of as dean academics. She is PhD supervisor of Rashtrasan Technology Maharaj Nag Nagpur University and work as a worked as a member of board of studies. She is a member of NAC think tank and is instrumental in design and development of new manuals application state reports and assessment tool in light of national education policy 2020 dr lena presently holding responsibility of convener seminar committee as well as team leader margadarshi mentor and mentee scheme newly launched by nac her area of interest is superconductivity of reference to physical world as well as human life and nano fluids She has published many articles in national and international journals. She has worked as national study team member of Unique Study done on status of women in India 2019, and has an opportunity to discuss with the then President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovin. She has delivered more than 950 plus lectures on many national, social, technical, 
issues on academic, social, and organization platforms, and chair sessions in national and international conferences and webinars. A top academician, patriot, and well-known personality of national stature. A well-known freelance writer, and she has written thousand articles, poems on many current issues in newspapers, magazines, and on social media in Hindi, Marathi, and English. Electronic media panelist and rising female and social issues on TV channels. Member of many professional bodies and social organizations like Rashtra Shavika Sabiti. She is a HR trainer for many sectors, KTC, PWD, Education Department, and many more. Welcome you, madam. I request you to please address the gap. Thank you, Shiv Kumar. Thank you very much. Uh, if you stop sharing, then I will share my slides. May I request host? Yeah. Yeah, namaskars to all. Uh, let me share my presentation. I think my presentation is visible. Just an input. Yeah, is it? Yes, ma'am, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, namaskars to okay. all. Uh, I'm very happy that Shivanand Sarma Memorial RV College is organizing seven day national seminar on revised assessment and accreditation of NAC changes and challenges. Uh, you know, uh, I come from Maharashtra and whenever there is a Vivaha in that uh, after marriage, there is a Saptapadi. In Saptapadi, Purohit, uh, you know, as uh, the couple uh, some of the things that they will uh, assure to. Mm. And uh, whatever is being chanted by Purohe, those are all vachans, and the couple has to uh, stick to the vachans throughout their life. I think uh, as SSMRV College, uh, they are doing seven-day national workshop uh, on seven criteria of NAC. All the resource person over here, they may be giving uh, giving you the insight of all the criteria, uh, then the meaning, or I should say intent of the various metrics, the documents, everything. So they will be uttering in front of you. They will take some buttons from you. And you being a participant of this workshop, I think, accomplishing or fulfilling those buttons will be the responsibility at your end. So one day Bharat Mataram, I'm very happy. Uh, that I'm here as a chief guest of today's function. Present, recently, we have celebrated 75th year of Azadi Ka Amrut Mahotsav. Let me give greetings to you all. Our director of this institution, Gita R, Principal S. Anil Kumar Ji, IQSC Director Nagraj Ji, Dr. Gokul, who is the event coordinator, who was in touch with me, our former advisor, Dr. Madhukar, and all dear participants, namaskars to all. When I had a conversation with Mr. Gokul, uh, he has asked me to speak on uh, ready, getting ready for accreditation. Uh, that was a topic uh, given to me. Uh, so institutionalization of a quality academic culture through revised accreditation framework of NAC, I thought of I should talk in it, uh, talk on it. Rightly pointed out by Dr. Gita, that there are 50,000 plus institutions in India and there is a great diversity of education in India, isn't it? But since its, its inception, uh, NAC is moving with a very broad vision to make quality the defining element of higher education in India. But this uh, quality uh, to be uh, incepted by the institution is a combination uh, of self and external quality evaluation, promotion, and sustenance initiative. So what I feel is it is not mere that uh, institution will present the document uh, of the activities, whatever they have uh, they, at their institution, and there will be an, just an external agency evaluating the things. Rather, I should say this is a joint venture of the uh, accreditation agency as well as uh, you know the institution. That is why if you uh, look into the revised accreditation framework, then institution is required to uh, submit the self-study report. Self-study report means self-introspection, evaluating our own initiatives uh, as per whatever is the vision as well as mission 
of the institution are we really heading uh, in a direction to that that is what is the self self introspection as the vision of nike is broad so to have a uh, you know to move forward the mission statement of nac is we uh, conduct periodic assessment accreditation of higher education institutions then uh, to stimulate the academic environment for promotion of quality of teaching learning and research in higher education institutions friends i believe that some of the participants who are there in this particular program uh, they might be from the institution who are already accredited you remember that or you know that through your experience once the institution is coming in the ambit of accreditation automatically uh, when the institution applies for next cycle the academic environment of the institution it gets enhanced slowly the quality culture in the institution starts instilling and institution promote the quality of teaching learning and research that is experience of all of us then to encourage self evaluation accountability to all the claims that are been made by the institution institution is uh, given a full autonomy to uh, have their own initiatives through the best practices they present uh, in the ssr and the innovation is also uh, the important part then to undertake quality related research studies consultancies and training friends when we say that uh, you the, so one of the criteria of nac uh, is related to research but we at nac also conduct the research studies that is how we present and prepare the state wise analysis report uh, which would be uh, you know a, a, a basic document for the policies related to uh, education uh, as state wise Uh, then collaborating with other stakeholders of higher education for quality evaluation promotion and sustenance so that is how this particular program of seven day seminar national seminar is one of the collaboration activity if you look into all the seven criteria of nac then in the foundation there are five core values on which this complete structure of revised accreditation framework is built in the first one is contribution to the national development we know that the basic purpose of the education is to uh, you know develop a human being a good citizen who will contribute in the national development then fostering the global competencies among student this era is of global competency so naturally institution has to provide initiate uh, the ventures wherein the students are given the skills so that they are able to take up the global challenges face them and convert them into the opportunities inculcating value systems among the student we live in a very diverse society wherein we have to deal with many aspects of life isn't it so inculcating the values system among the student promoting use of technology you are aware of the whole process of nac is technology driven right from the registration uh, or what you can say uh, showing the interest uh, towards accreditation first of all the institution has to create the portal has to register for and create a hei portal and the entire process right from the application to the result declaration in between at the various stages what an uh, whatever is uh, you know any clarification you have to present or a qr you have to fill the entire process is ict driven so we expect institution to get ready so that they should use technology by and large then quest for excellence whatever we were earlier yesterday we have to be better tomorrow isn't it that is why i think in this particular title of the webinar there are changes and challenges in assessment and accreditation that is uh, uh, that is there in the thing uh, see the change is the truth of life isn't it and uh, these changes are to be taken in a very positive way so that we built in uh, you know energy within and uh, try to face uh, all the consequences of all the changes in a very positive way uh, for the betterment of the institution so if you look into the entire focus of uh, assessment 
then NAC continues with its focus on quality culture of the institution in terms of quality initiatives, sustenance, and enhancements, and it is reflected in vision organization operations of the NAC. NAC's conviction is that the quality concern are institutional. Quality assessment can be better done by the institution through self-evaluation. And that is why I told you that in this particular framework, we ask the institution to prepare their SSR. And if you look into the entire SSR questionnaire, then we feel that the participation of all the stakeholders which are associated with the institution, may it be the ma management, may it be the faculty, administrative staff, student, parents, employees, community, alumni, their contribution in pre preparation of SSR is uh, there uh, through various questions of NAC. Let us understand the terminology. Assessment is nothing but a performance evaluation of the institution uh, or its units based on a certain established criteria. Let me be very clear in this that NAC goes for institutional accreditation. So the, this accreditation, it is devised, it is based on certain established criteria. And in the present case, we have seven criteria wherein the institution has to respond with the help of either the quantitative uh, data or as with the supporting documents or a description in uh, the word limit, which is there in the SSR. Accreditation is a certification of quality and that is valid for a fixed period. Uh, in case of NAC, it is five years, but institution continuously scoring good, uh, uh, getting good grades for uh, in the higher cycles, uh, they, they have the uh, accreditation extended for seven years as well. So if you look into the overall process of NAC, then first of all, the HEI has to register on a portal, has to give the intent application for accreditation that we call it as a IIQA institutional information for quality assessment. Then comes uh, the SSR, what we call it as a self-study report. Self-study report comprises of two types of questions. One are the quantitative questions wherein the numbers are given by the institution to define the quality initiatives in the institution. And another are qualitative questions, which are nothing but the descriptive uh, and these descriptive qualitative questions, they are been uh, evaluated by the peer members once the institution uh, pre-qualifies uh, in, uh, in this particular assessment accreditation process. Peer team visits happen and finally the institution reaches a goal uh, of getting accredited. There are various timelines. Time is important, but due to COVID, some of the you know dilation in the time has happened but now again, we are regaining the same pace of life, isn't it? So after acceptance of IIQA, within 30 to 45 days, the institution has to submit self-study report. But friends, since self-study report seeks the data information for previous five years, naturally it will not be a job of just 45 days. Rather, institution has to prepare every year with the relevant documents, with the relevant information and keep the data ready so that within 30 to 45 days, institution can compile entire information and prepare their SSR ready to submit to NAC. Once the SSR gets submitted, then there is a provision for the quantitative metrics to be evaluated. We call it as a data validation and verification process. This DVV is an external, uh, external partners are there and they evaluate and verify the claims of the institution related to quantitative metrics. This entire process of the DVV, it may be taking up in 30 days and within next three months, once the institution gets pre-qualified, within the next 90 days or three months, the peer team visit will happen and institution will be declared to be accredited. Now, in the revised accreditation framework, many uh, aspects I have already told you, but one thing I would like to disclose in front of you because it is related to changes and challenges. Friends, now NAC has revised the affiliated manual. The number of metrics in the uh, affiliated manual, they are drastically reduced to make ease the process of accreditation, one point. Secondly, NAC has also disclosed the benchmarks so that now the institution is knowing 
if they wanted to achieve this particular target as they wish these are the benchmarks they have to acquire so all these processes of the nag whatever changes we are making at nag it is uh, to make the process easy and bring more number of institution in ambit of assessment and accreditation who are eligible for the assessment and accreditation any institution which has got the existence for the 6 years or has got the two batches of graduation they are eligible for to apply to the process of nag availability of affiliation i say sra documents for the recent year uh, that is the compliance that institution has to uh, get ready with and so also it is very much necessary that institution has to register on a nag portal with the fees which is required to be paid by the institution at various stages friends nag believe that educational institution is a living entity just like for all living beings of this world we require the five elements that is sunlight wind soil water and space similarly if you look into all seven criteria of nag if the institution is performing well across all the criteria definitely what we say that institutionalization of quality culture that will happen in the institution if you look into depending upon the type of the institution you belong to this is just what you can say the basic institution i have displays but uh, if you are a university this is the uh, this is how the, uh, the seven criteria as they are delineated into various key indicators down the line they are uh, you know divided into qualitative and quantitative matrix what i uh, told you now was about the first june 2022 what we launched with the affiliated constituent college manuals wherein you can see the difference that we have drastically reduced the number of metrics decreasing the load of documentation so the entire process of assessment and accreditation uh, takes the participation of the stakeholders or i i should say the groups at three different level first of all the self study report i already mentioned who and all are the party to preparation of ssr if you uh, look into the second criteria of nag then therein we ask for the student satisfaction survey because students are the important stakeholders of any educational institution so what is their opinion about the teaching learning process and overall academic in, uh, in you know environment of the institution that is very very important and this student satisfaction survey get uh, it starts as soon as the institution submits the ssr and along with the data validation verification process the student satisfaction survey uh, it is uh, starting uh, and the students are getting the questions the institution has to provide the you know all details about the student along with the uh, their email addresses with wherein they will receive this question ir and they have to fill the question ir within the stipulated time once the institution pre qualifies then all the academic experts what we call it as our assessors which comprises of a team what we call it as a peer team they will visit to the institution and they will try to evaluate uh the overall quality atmosphere of the institution what you have described in your qualitative metrics so institutionalization of all good practices and internalization of the quality culture uh, is the aim of all the uh, you know uh, uh, higher education institution now a question comes to our mind why to do all these uh, you know things so what and all are the benefits of accreditation the first very thing is that the institution can know their strengths weaknesses opportunities through a informed review process because when you prepare your ssr that time many things you realize that this is being an educational institution we have to focus on all these things we have to prepare the documentation properly and this documentation should be available as and when requested by all the sra sras to which you are affiliated you can identify the internal areas for planning and resource allocation that is also very important because in the inform review process we can know where what and all are the pockets uh, of our uh, you know governance uh wherein we need to uh, governance as well as uh, the uh, the policy decisions wherein we have to allocate the resources 
it can collegiate on campus. So also the various funding agencies will look at as objective data. If you are accredited, definitely the funding will be the possibility for the institution. A new sense of direction and identity is gained by the institution. So also, if your students are to be placed, then definitely employers will look up, look for what is the grade of the institution, where from they are picking the graduates. And intra and inter-institutional uh, interaction will also be a possibility. So this is a canvas wherein institution can find that these are the benefits of the accreditation. Now I will move to the aspect, what is the quality? Basically, quality is an abstract concept. And it is pursued by the different stakeholders differently, isn't it? But if a quality has to be measured and assessed, then appropriate intervention be undertaken at the right time for quality improvement and quality sustenance. So it is a really a big thing uh, for an abstract term uh, if we really wanted to uh, you know, evaluate the uh, quality. So uh, NAC request you to have your quality assurance cell, as well as you should have a quality management system, play, uh, which is there in the institution for achieving the desired quality. What do we mean by that? The quality management system decides the objective, the purpose, the process, the procedures, responsibilities, document, and participation of all the components of the organization. So the quality uh, uh, management system uh, main role will be to coordinate and direct the organizations and the activities. Then it has to satisfactorily meet the stakeholders' need, comply with the regulatory requirements, and so also to improve the organization's effectiveness and efficiencies on a continuous basis. So quality management system, it has got or it is built on the strong foundation of certain key components. I will just rush through it. It is about the quality awareness quality design plan, quality assurance control, quality audits and review, and finally, the quality improvement. So it is not a job of uh, uh, one or two people, but the entire institution has to look forward for all these aspects in their institution so that there will be the transformation in entire education, uh, you know, uh, stereotype education system uh, leads to boredom. But if you have a zeal, uh, if you have a very expert faculties wherein there is a participative learning, interactive learning, uh, then definitely the education will become uh, uh, become really enjoyable. So journey of le uh, teaching and learning start with the remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. So slowly as the institution moves towards assessment accreditation, definitely the learning levels of the student, the learning levels of the faculty even, it goes on improving. For that, that uh, request all the accredited institution to have the quality assurance cell. The quality assurance cell has a tactics for performance evaluation and accreditation. They will guide the institution how to uh, you know, uh, move in a direction what and all is the mission and uh, vision statement of the uh, institution. Then quality up upgradation of higher education institution, post quality uh, sustenance major would be uh, taken by the institution and uh, IQAC will become a part of institution system, which will work towards realization of goals of quality enhancements and su uh, sustenance. So any institution uh, uh, aspiring for assessment and accreditation should have their own IQAC cell or quality management system still in the uh, institution, uh, which will frame uh, the entire policy and action plan and they, they, they should also prepare the quality benchmark uh, for the various academic and administrative activities in the institution, facilitating and creation the learner center and uh, learner centric environment, faculty to adopt required knowledge and technology for participatory teaching learning process. So these all functions will be taken up by the very dynamic and uh, what you can say, um, uh, the experienced uh, Faculties in the IQAC. So, uh, if the institution want to get ready for assessment and accreditation, so this is an overview. This is an canvas wherein the institution has to focus on so that uh, they can put uh, uh, all their efforts. 
so hard work and sincere efforts for quality education is an opportunity in light of nep to grow see if you can grab it at a right time choice is yours otherwise uh, you know you cannot reach the goal it is required then question comes to our mind there are many things of max assessment accreditation how we will come to know you remember the uh, you know panchatantra story uh, that fearful rabbit and the remaining animals in a jungle they run behind the rabbit because rabbit has taken on head uh, the whole jungle stating that a uh, run run the cloud or the you know uh, a, a cloud is going to uh, fall and we are going to die but nobody inquires and get to the position where rabbit was sleeping and try to know the facts and figures similar is the case with the institution we find some institution they create a chaos because of the ignorance and the whole education scenario they it runs after ko oh, it is very difficult lot of documents are required rather i should say that don't run with ignorance rather sense look hear feel read understand and be knowledgeable the all required information related to nax ana process it is hosted on the nax website may it be the manuals may it be the guidelines may it be the glossary may it be the student satisfaction survey question may it be the documents required to answer or reply to the various metrics key indicators uh, 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 metrics and uh, uh, qualitative and quantitative metrics what and all are the documents through the standard operating procedure so i i i request all of you that you should uh, visit to the nax website oftenly because all, all changes all announcements are made on the website we run with a very transparent mechanism any questions you have you can raise on your portal the issue and it is a guarantee that within 48 hours your uh, question will be replied we always talk of a change now we we the academicians talk of a change uh, in light of nep but now the new hashtag of life is if you want to see some change we want it to be a part of change so be a change see a change and that's all from my side related to making institution or getting the institution ready for assessment and accreditation if the good quality culture is there in the institution then only whatever is our dream to make our bharat atmanirbhar bharat uh, will be a great possibility uh, thank you institution for you know uh, inviting me for this particular program and uh, giving me a chance to share my views uh on this platform thank you very much over to the host thank you ma'am for the valuable insights that was indeed valuable i'm sure that we will follow it accordingly now with the great anticipation i request mr arun kumar assistant professor department of commerce to introduce today's resource person dr madhukar bias former advisor nac and external member iqac ssm abi college over to you sir thank you sanket sir dr madhukar bs he was formerly advisor and general counsel executive committee member in nac he is also an external member of iqac at ssm abi college he has more than 30 years of rich professional experience in different aspects of higher education like educational consultancy and assessment and accreditation of higher education institutions sir has 21 years of experience in nac he has conducted various workshops and seminars in this area and coordinated various nac peer team visits across india he is founder director iqac university of mumbai and recipient of endeavor executive award of australia he has received outstanding paper award at an international conference in thailand he is member of assessment committee for yoga certification board in ministry of ayush and many more his educational background is he pursued be from nie institute of technology mysore 
MBA in finance and PhD from Sri Venkateshwara University. Sir, now the session is over to you. Request you to please take over the session. Thank you. So, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I'm happy to be part of uh, this uh, program. In fact, I have uh, uh, been impressed by the work that has been done in SSM, MRV College, Dr. Anil Kumar Ji, and Dr. Geeta, whom I had a chance to meet yesterday, Dr. Nagendra, uh, uh, the director of IQA AC, Dr. Gokul, who is also uh, the coordinator for this program. Uh, it is a pride and privilege for me to be associated with this program. Also, I'm very happy to uh, listen to Dr. Leela, Leela Gani, who has already given you the insight of what is expected of you. So a nice uh, presentation. Nice to listen in a sweet voice we had. So it is so nice to listen to that. And maybe I have a harsh voice here to put up with that. So <clears throat> now, as you all are aware of, I think 400 participants is a good number. And I don't know how many of you really are already aware of the NAC uh, processes and gone through uh, many of, uh, gone through one or two cycles of NAC accreditation. I am I am sure uh, the other colleagues, my colleagues in NAC and my honorable guy, Dr. Siddhappa, will also be talking about it in, in detail in the next seven days. As I say, seven days have been uh, a virtue NAC right from the beginning. Everything, seven criteria, seven, 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 seven has been a virtue. So we have been, uh, as Saptapati and all that, as Madam explained, it has been a long journey of seven in NAC. Apart from that, let me now come back, to, go back to how Hello, you are able to hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, my purpose here is yes, uh, to come give focus to the accreditation process per se. What I'm planning in this uh, session is, it is like, how do you plan for an accreditation process? This is very important for many reasons if you don't you all we all hope that we do well but hope is not a plan unless we do uh, we get into detailed planning of how to approach the accreditation process we generally from my experience i can tell you that a lot of times get waste, wasted in the preparation of the accreditation for the accreditation process lot of error occurs over time because you get frustrated and then finally when you uh, when you land up with the final document there are a lot of errors that occurs this has been seen this has been a historical evidence we have so planning is very vital for uh, when you start doing your ssr now it is like it's like uh, like two uh, two persons were commissioned to go to a forest and uh, get firewood, fell trees and get firewood. So two of them were sent. Every day it was seen that one person was doing better than the other. So they wanted to find out why is that one person doing better than the other. So one day they followed them and then they found that one person was actually taking some time to grind the axe. So his output was always better than the other person who was not doing it. 
so grinding an axe is an important part of his function his felling of trees like the like this to have a better efficient outcome of the process it is better to plan the execution of the preparation of ssr now that is what i am going to talk about in this presentation uh sir should i will uh, the presentation is already with uh, with them i will try to present from my end in case there is any problem i could request uh, uh the host to put on the presentation all the presentation work sure sir is that presentation visible not it sir not it your presentation it is not visible no sir no i don't know why it is now not visible sir not visible yes sir don't know like i am using your arrow and then doing it i don't know why it is not visible now no sir hello can you present from ever and i don't know what is uh, what is the problem that is occurring uh, uh, madhukar sir uh, uh, we hmm. present it from here one minute sir yeah one minute one minute sir can you see the screen yeah i can All... see the screen here so it, it is not go. showing yeah first one you can present one minute sir Yes, sir. Ah, uh, yeah. So, uh, in this session, as I told you, I will talk about the revised accreditation framework, and I will give give you the insights on how to approach it rather than going into the details of it, which I understand we will be dealing in the next uh, six days. Uh, now, next. Uh, next uh, slide please see that this is a present this presentation is for educational purpose only and effort to promote quality of education it does not intend guarantee of any specific outcome okay the next slide this the so this is for self uh, and accreditation framework before that just back so there are many agencies which are looking at accreditation there are uh, reasons for multiple accreditation some people want to get into multiple accreditations etc but it is a choice of the institution to exercise discretion in this matter because accreditation itself should not be overloaded in the system so exercise discretion i'm not talking about nac accreditation in particular which is mandatory for you to do it because of law there are various accreditation people get into but you have to really look at whether you need to do too many accreditations of different organizations this is a choice the institution has to make i'm making this point for the simple reason that we uh, there are enormous feedback from the institution that this in itself is overloading the system it is for the benefit of the institution that this is made it is a reflective process and this is not the purpose of the institution accreditation is not the main purpose but it is a reflective process so this distinction has to be clearly maintained when you do your accreditation process 
that's why it is said the accreditation process that you carry on should be a very very effective and efficient process so that you will not consume too much of time in doing this not more than 10% of your time should be allotted for these uh, the allotted for work other than the core work of an institution that is teaching learning and research and extension activities next slide please what is the purpose and benefit of accreditation few observations one is internal learning to develop leadership skills at all levels to develop continuous quality and en enhancement mechanisms methodical documentation team building transparency and brand branding if during the process if you are not able to achieve these things the, then it is not the purpose of the process is not served it is not about as madam ghane uh, lina madam told you it is about the institution getting its quality institution going into continuous improvement process so this is the essence of this process essence of any accreditation process and this is essence of nac and this benefits you have to see that whether you have benefited in any of these ways if not you have to do a gap analysis inside the institution also that you are not able to get in get the benefits of an accreditation process so it is very important please take care of that next next sir next slide please and before i get into this sir can uh, can you open that uh, tamil nadu one which is there in the a, co a college i had just taken out uh, yesterday i had given there uh, a college uh, uh, from tamil nadu the uh, one uh, that one kindly open that see before i go into the further into the presentation i want to show you i want to just browse through a presentation of a self study report field in self study report of one of the colleges in tamil nadu and this college has got a plus grade there is no particular uh, particular preference for this college but i have selected this college just to show you how a field in accreditation reports look like this is important because this is a background this is some of the these are some background things you have to do before you start getting into an accreditation process one of the things is in the nac pro nac website you will get institutions which has already submitted the report this may not be the latest one but it will give you a fair idea on how the report is done how the report is written so it is better you download few few of the uh, reports of good colleges whether it is tamil nadu karnataka whichever place doesn't matter even you select known colleges which has already got then download the reports that is the first thing you can do is is my advice so you note down these points which are important i'm not getting into the nitty gritty of what you want to write and all that this many if you take two or three of this and see what is written in this you will get a fair idea of what is to be written whenever you are in a doubt you consult these manuals uh, these self study reports so that you will get a fair understanding of what it is still some doubt remains you can always write to nac on their portal and they will get back etc can you run this down a little faster so that see so that we'll go uh, as far see all this part has been written there is a structure in presentations there are various ways people have presented so look at these things it will help you so criteria wise you go go down go I'll go down a little faster further this is the profile of the institution this has been filled up already by that particular institution go down further go down further and when th there are certain cases where view document is given when you press this doc view document in this you may not be able to get it this needs to go through internet you will get the relevant minutes of the meeting and how they have and what is the uh, documents they have uh, loaded onto the system this will help you to understand the type of documents that you need to load 
supporting the i have seen institutions which have loaded some document which is not relevant to the question so take care in case of doubt always go back to this go back and see what is the type of documents that has been accepted why i am saying this is this has been already accepted by nax dvv that is the, the process the uh, validated it has been already validated by nax these reports have already been validated by nax so this will give you a fair idea on what is the documents you need to upload so view documents sometimes uh, it may be blocked but most of the times it is available if it is not available with one institution it is available one institution if it blocked it the other institutions do, don't block it so you can go into three four institutions and look at it particularly this this particular uh, uh, report may not be of the uh, recent uh, manual but it is it is of a older manual but doesn't matter it is only about the structures and the weightages that has been changed the questions increased the questions decreased etc but the basic structure of the process is the same as of now the basic structure is the same which uh, lena madam said we have a uh, criteria key aspects etc that i will come to in my main presentation now you can go back a little faster sir on this so this so you know how it is like so this uh, this is how the whole system this is how one institution has presented their data and this is an a plus institution so since it's an a plus institution i think largely they have done well in the presentation you can cho you can choose many uh, two three institutions uh, uh, two three institution uh, cell study report and then uh, wherever you have a doubt you can go on this now we can close this and go back to the presentation you uh, this uh, this presentation is available with the institution maybe they can share it with you so you can use that now i have come to this next is how do you register registration is round here first you have to register for the now i am coming to the nac accreditation per se nac accreditation what you, you have to register for the first cycle if it is first cycle you have to register other cycles already the registration could be there the registration is open round the year so you can register then when you intend to go for accreditation you have to uh, uh, fill up a form which is institutional information for quality assessment the form is also available i will show the show you the form the form generally contains general information of the institution like where it is situated where is the principal etc etc and some faculty detail etc it is a, it is a basic information kind of a, a document so this document based on this document the eligibility criteria is de is decided by nac whether it has you are you accept it you reject it that eligibility criteria as mentioned two batches of students should have passed out from an institution and it should be a legally recognized institution these are the two eligibility criteria that are uh, that are looked at in this and the, the, then the some aspects of it are like uh, uh, you have to uh, in the trans transparency on you information has to be transparent you should uh, load uh, information on your on your website etc which are some of the questions uh, questions on this uh, mm, questions on this then once the iaqa is accepted then you have to submit your uh, submission of ssr uh, once you clear that you will be requested to submit the ssr once the ssr is submitted there are two aspects to the ssr one is the quality one is the quantitative and another is the qualitative one once you pre qualify on the quantitative part i will go back get to you on this a little further you will be allowed to continue with peer team visit results and then appeals if required so this there is two aspects to this one is student satisfaction survey with this part of uh, a part of this process and another is data valid verification and validation one thing you must understand in this is this process is on, totally online it is a process where you deal with everything on a nac portal so it is a total online process next slide please now this is the core structure of the process you uh, you get into some, there are seven criterias i am talking with focus on affiliated colleges only 
I'm not going beyond that. But anyway, criteria seven is common across whether it's university, whether it is colleges, whether it is autonomous, affiliated, etc. The criteria remains the same. It is seven criteria. Now there are key indicators, 32. Under criteria, there are what is called as key indicators. These key indicators defines what is contained in the criteria. So now you please note and make a point. All of you, whether you, you are part of uh, making the report or not, kindly go through the self-study report from point one to the last page. First page to the last page. I'm talking about all faculty members, including non-teaching staff of the university, should go through the go through the report, go through the uh, manual. This is important for the simple reason. All of you more or less should be on the same page. Otherwise, what happens is each one, if you understand it differently, when the self-study report is submitted and later a peer team, peer team comes in for evaluate, evaluation, we have seen that there has been instances, many instances where the same self-study report has been quoted in, with the different perceptions, indicating a lot of confusion in the system. This results in you getting lower marks in the peer team visit. So when I, this is one of the points you can note down that all of you have to go through the report completely. Don't you may have a differences of opinion where this question should be there, should not be there, all that stuff. That is okay that you can write to NAC directly that these are our suggestions. But as as on date when you go for the self go for the accreditation process, you should take it as given. There's no argument on whether it should exist, it should not exist, etc. It is as given. Now, when you look at quantitative metrics and qualitative metrics, key indicators under key indicators, you have what is called as quantitative metrics and qualitative metrics. You see quantitative metrics, there are 34 and qualitative metrics are 20, 30, 22. And, and each one has its own, the whole process is of our, about 1000, is evaluated at a 1000 weightage level. Each, each criteria has different weightages. That is for the reason that the criteria has been prioritized. That is why the weightages are different. When I say prioritized, in an affiliated college, teaching learning process has a high weightage of 350, whereas research has only a weight, total overall weightage of 100. Why is this so? This is because of the reason that in an affiliated college, teaching learning process has priority. That is the core of that affiliated college. Whereas when you move to a university setup, this weightage becomes different. In case of a university, the research component also gets higher weightage in, with the teaching conference, uh, teaching weightage. That is for the reason that research is more important in a university setup. So this is there is a prioritization and this prioritization carries this meaning. That is in case of affiliated, it is more that is the core function of the institution. So you have to con when the more the weightage, the more the scoring you have in that weightage. So I will come to it. This is the fundamental understanding of this. Now, quantitative metrics and quality. What is quantitative metrics? The quant I will get to metrics. The quantitative metrics is that the output of this metrics is a number. Is a number. So that it can it is amicable to programming. Whereas a qualitative metrics is a text box. You will write text box answers, you write answers to this. This qualitative metrics is evaluated by the peer team during their peer team visit. Now, in the change scenario, there is an error here. About here, the weightage about quantitative metrics is only about 60% and in qualitative metrics, it is 40%. That means qualitative metrics, it is 40% means you have larger leeway with the peer team members. Here it is data based. The data is there, you give data 
and you get the results. So here you don't have more leeway here. It is more fixed. Here you have better leeway. Leeway in the sense, I am not saying you can have, you can give in some wrong information, false information. You can, you have a face-to-face -face interaction here. Whereas there is nothing like this here. Face-to-face -face interaction gives you a better leeway, a leeway so that it can be understood. You can translate your what you want to say better, etc., to a PA team member. There's a so here you need to concentrate not only here, you also need to concentrate here. This will be useful once before you have a peer team visit. I always suggest that you have a mock visit. And the presentation style matters. How do you present it? So many times it happens, many places, same thing has been repeated across presentation. And the vital things have not been, vital issues, which helps in scoring has not been present. This has, I've seen in many peer team visits, this has happened. Because I've done some hundred thousand visits across India. So you have to be careful on how do you present it. It's important. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide, please. Can you go to the next slide? So what are the seven criteria? You see the right side, curricular aspect, teaching, learning, research, innovation. Sir, can you zoom it a little? Can you zoom it, please? See, these are the seven criteria, curricular aspect, teaching, learning, research, innovation, infrastructure, learning. These are, the, these are known already. You know this. These are the seven criteria. There have been some changes. The criteria has not been changed. There has been some revi earlier revision. There has been some changes that you don't worry as of now. This way, the earlier one consultant, it has been innovation, etc. This, this remains and you can keep, as Madam uh, told you, you can keep you can keep watching the NAC website often so that any changes comes to your uh, comes to your notice because this is a dynamic process. A lot of changes do take place. These are the seven criteria uh, under which you have to uh, under these criteria you have key aspects. Under these key aspects you have qualitative metrics and quantitative metrics and all all key as under all key aspects you will have qualitative and quantitative metrics. So next slide. Now I have extracted one of the key aspects. This is under criteria two. Criteria two is teaching, teaching, learning and evaluation. Under that 2.4 is teacher profile and quality. That is 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. These are the different key aspects. This is one of the key aspects I have shown to you. That is why I said it is important that you read the manual from the beginning to end. These key aspects indicate what is covered in under this. Under what are the what the metrics? What does the metric reflects? What are the what are what the metrics are supposed to reflect? That is the teacher quality is a composite term to indicate the quality of teachers in terms of qualification, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So what does the metrics capture? The metrics captures some of these, the qualification, characteristics, adequacy, etc. Through the metric, this is what is captured. So it is important to understand what is the essence of it, particularly when you have to fill in your qualitative metrics. Quantitative metrics is more data and is more question answer type. Quality, this gives you an indication of what is to be what is to be addressed? Next slide, please. Now, student satisfaction survey is an important component. This comes under teaching, learning, and evaluation. That is criteria two. This carries a high weightage of 60 in the present system. Present, uh, uh, present uh, from Jan 1st, the manual that is applicable from Jan 1st, 23. It carries a weightage of 60. You have to, this is, as Madam said, 
uh, in any institution the students satisfaction is the critical component they are the main stakeholders so this is measured through a questionnaire which is directly sent to the students you are so you will be uh, advised to send their email id etc you need to collect email id of all your students and all that in case some of your students don't have an email id kindly help them to get an email id so this is a learning process for this in most likely most unlikely that it may happen but there are cases there are some institutions where i have been told that the students have don't have an email id in that case kindly help them to create their own email ids that will not only be a requirement of nac it is also a learning experience for the student and also the institutions and also help them on how to use it so this is one of the important aspects important and you also need to sensitize the students that they have to respond when nac sends them the self uh, the questionnaires they have to respond to it sometimes there is a tendency that they ignore if they ignore and they don't there is a specific limit of 10% etc they have to re receive the response that is available in the website i don't go into detail of what percentage etc if they don't respond that many is not responded you will lose that marks so it is sensitizing the students are important for uh, in this uh, in this particular uh, student satisfaction survey next slide please now in the revise what is the distribution of matrix and the weight uh, matrix and case across the criteria as i said seven criteria key indicators 32 qualitative matrix which is designated as qlm qualitative you see qlm means qualitative matrix 22 quantitative matrix 34 total matrix is 56 and now can you uh, open this uh, distribution of weightages Uh. is it visible see now you look at curricular aspects as a total weightage of 100 key indicators in that are 1.1 curricular planning and implementation it has a weightage of 20 key indicator academic flexibility has a weightage of 30 key indicator 1.2 curricular enrichment has a weightage of 30 key indicator feedback system has a weightage of 20 when you add this it becomes 7 it becomes 30 30 60 plus 100 and i told you as i told you teaching learning in case of affiliated colleges have a weightage of 350 so these are the key indicators under this key indicators you have what is called as quantitative and qualitative matrix so for an uh, for uh, affiliated college 3 you have 350 weightage now go down scroll it down sir so you see weightage each each criteria has a weightage and the key indic some some of these key indicators come to that and the total weightage is 1000 okay go back to the presentation sir next slide so this is how the grading pattern is and most of you i am very sure likes to so you have what is called as a cumulative grade point average all this all this course that you get is converted into what is called as a cumulative grade point average based on that you will be given the scores you can show you can go to the nac website and see how the scoring is done the score sheets are also available of other colleges which already already gone through the process you can go and see the score sheet once so that you understand how the scoring pattern is here i couldn't i'm not uh, going into that aspect because it uh, for uh, lack of time see now you see any institution likes to be at least a a plus and b a plus plus sometimes what happens is if you miss somewhere i'm not saying you may there is a possibility of lack of presentation or oversight where you fall back on b plus or b plus you may fall into b or b plus not for the reason that you are a b 
you your scoring is at b plus but you have not taken enough care in your presentations in your uh, write ups etc so this is also quite a common common issue among institution that they have not presented what needs to be presented for for the for better scorings so this this you need to keep in mind that you must you if your institution is above is uh, actually at b plus you you may not be able to move to a plus but borderline cases which is due to lack of presentation lack of giving information properly you may skip your chances of moving into an higher grade so caution has to be exhibited that is what i am saying caution in being clear in what you want to say next next slide this is the iqa iq uh, iqa of the college uh, you can just click and uh, run through it fast no no previous slide sir this one uh, so this is the iqa format this is available in the nac website you can go through this is all general information the go slide go down fast you can show it okay then this is a, this is the iqa format okay sir you can close it now next slide and this is the self study report a manual which is there which is uh, uh, i think we have we can just show it uh, fast one uh, this is the manual this is the latest manual see and this is there you can see this man this is the latest so you read the manual completely now close it sir next slide please ah. there is what is called as one important aspect in this is what is called as an extended profile this you can open this extended profile sir this is the extended profile of the college there are about three questions this has been compressed from the earlier earlier one this this is very important for the institution because many of the calculations that happens the data is captured from this this uh, this data is captured from the extended profile of the college this is from where many of the questions, many of the calculations the data is captured from here in the nac terminology it's called the denominator denominator for calculations so you have to be very careful when you uh, when you fill up your extended profile and even this extended profile has to have documentary support so it's very important be careful and this needs to be this will help you in corroborating data across board there's a see you give data in various same data will be given in various parts of the report so corroboration is also done using extended profile and also this is the key document for you so be careful in filling this up you can get back sir and this is affiliate one templates templates for this see 1.1 the all these are the templates which you need to fill up so this is an example of a template this is the example of templates See, why this template all data you are play all data is evidence based anything you talk about has to be supported with evidence what is the dbv what is the role of uh, data validation it is what you are claiming in your ssr whether it is supported by data or the minutes of the meeting etc that is what exactly the function of the dvv is they validate it and say whether it is right or wrong there is a process for that they will get back to you once to for seeking clarification as of now it's only one this uh, they go back uh, seek clarification from you after that internally nac uh, looks at it once and it is and the uh, value is fine uh, as value is final so this is what the role of dvv is next uh, next next slide 
uh, this is what this what are the said uh, there is a section b of the manual you have executive summary profile of the college under profile of the college extended profile is part of this i i showed it separately because i wanted to bring in the importance of it profile of the college quality indicator framework data templates documents etc when you go through the manual you will understand this easily executive summary is about giving the summary of three four page summary of your institution profile again is in the profile there are many questions related to nep which you need to answer so those things you have to take care there are, these are all how do you answer this what are the indicators it is institution specific you can refer to some other documents i showed you earlier and that can be that from that you can make it make your own uh, uh, own write up on nep and other issues that is there in the profile of the college as of now this is not scored this i suggest can be done by one team separately one aspect you can uh, you look at us qualitative qualitative metrics can be handled by a single team that is that is my we are looking at because the flow the language etc there should be it is better to have a similarity in this because i have seen many times generally there is a tendency to have seven different criteria seven different teams to do it in this case what happens is the language flow for qualitative metrics changes across criteria and it looks disconnected so in my opinion otherwise if you do it seven different teams does it you can you should you should overall a team should correlate it better they could look at the sequence uh, the flow of the flow of uh, language the content whether the critical issues are brought into it etc this is important that's why i said the understanding of the manual is very important here it is because of the understanding if the understanding of the manual and all of you who are in the who are do who you are responsible for doing this are in the same plane the job becomes easy otherwise lot of rework gets in you get into lot of rework which gets frustrating over time and in the final you say okay finish something and send it and then that in that is where you lose your marginal grades you lose because of that uh, that situation next slide please so this one i have already talked about quality qualitative metrics quantitative metrics i will show you a few examples online survey of standard operating procedure i will talk about it in a in later slide later next slide please now extract of qualitative type of uh, quality types of metrics i will just show you an extract of the type of metrics okay sir now you can show see this is criteria 1 curricular aspects 100 key indicator curry 1.3 curriculum enrichment 30 metric number is 13.1 and qlm means qualitative metrics remember here it has a weightage of 10 and in this this is the question institution integrates and this is the answer given by one institution this is just a sample for you this is one type of question this is qualitative metrics qlm is the indicator you you see there is a weightage to this next slide next slide please now this is another type of question here you have to i have used the earlier question this question has been changed in the revised manual in the new manual this question has been changed but i have retained from the old manual to draw your attention to that here 2.6.3 average pass percentage of students current year data they have asked. it is asked earlier but now it has been changed to five year data to just to bring out that it has been changed in the new manual i have retained the old one this has a weightage of 45 high weightage you you uh, remember it has a weightage of 45 the total weightage of teaching learning in that key indicator one uh, student performance and the 90 under this it has uh, one of the key, uh, metric has a weightage of 45 there are other metrics which will total up to 90 this 90 
all other key indicators and teaching learning and evaluation will total up to 350 next slide please this is another type of qnm here you see qnm means quantitative metrics see here implementation of gray areas of operation admin etc all of the above four of the above three of the above etc you it is a tick box when you tick this and you have to give some support documents which will be which is self explanatory in case you have a doubt you go to the go to somebody who are already sub, already submitted the manuals there you will get an idea of what is the uh, docu supporting documents you need to upload and you will get doubts so there is no doubt you will keep getting doubts so go to that and see that and now weightage here is low it has only four weightage next slide please now i will talk about an example of a quantitative matrix next slide this is the question this is the question 2.4.2 this is there in teaching learning evaluation key indicator 2.4 teacher profile and quality etc and this is the percent total number of full time teachers with self qualified and total number of this into 100 this is the formula being used so this is a quantitative matrix this has weightage of 25 good weightage now let me see how how this is let me take an example how how it is uh, how actually the calculation takes place even though you don't have to do the calculation yourself now, now the twist is there. Now, since the benchmarks have been made open, since the benchmarks are made available, it's open. You have, you can make an under, you can make your own calculations and see that where do you stand as far as qualitative, quanti, quantitative metrics are concerned. Till now, this benchmark was not shared now it is made open so more transparency has brought into the system now you need to calculate now i'll tell you how to do the calic how the calculation is done by taking an example of this next slide please there may be minor changes so when you do the your calculations go to the go to the man, latest manual and see what is done and moreover the new manual Many questions may be different or it could be clubbed, but the structure remains the same. See, now let me take one of this faculty 2.2 metrics year 2019, 20, etc. And the number of faculty, say 30. See, number of people with PhD. This first row shows you the number of people with PhD. 32, number of faculty with people, PhD, 32, 43, 31, 26, 9. And from the full-time faculty, this is denominator for calculation. I said this is taken from the extended profile. There it is 95, 91, 94, 97, 9, 68. Now, when you apply, apply the formula, this will be the form. This will be the results. 33.6, 47, 31, 30, 26, 20, 31. And the average of this will come to 30.56. Next slide, please. Now, this meant benchmark was not available now they have made this open in our calculation you will get because it is 30 percent you will get two in this particular reference you get two so two into weightage you will get 40 but now since the benchmarks available are already available it is available on the website if I go to 2.42, any PhD percentage less than 30%, they will get zero. In fact, here I'm showing it is a positive way, but actually if the number percentage of PhD is less than 30, you will get zero here. In case I have uh, given, I have made it at one. This is imaginary. Now this has become public. From this kind of calculations, you can find this out. This number, this 30% will give you 
that's the output output of this particular criteria uh, matrix from that metric output you can find out from the key indicate from the uh, benchmarks you can find out where you stand next slide please then there's what is called as glossary glossary you have to look at because what is full time teacher i have back to back to the earlier slide sir back to uh, back see here full time teach in this slide the word full time teacher is used back back to the slides back back sir full time teachers full time teacher do you understand the full time teacher here now when you go to the now you go to the glossary sir next slide glossary glossary defines what is a full time teacher a temporary employed for 90% of the normal or statutory number uh, number of work covers for a full time teacher over a complete this glossary gives you the definition of what nac means by that term so you have to clearly go through the glossary and understand what the glossary what is the terminology used by nac this is for common understanding you may have a different approach to what a full time te teacher means as far as nac definition is concerned full time teacher means this definition so you have to look into glossary next slide please and now i come to what is standard operating procedures standard operating procedures means there are three parties involved in this process one is nac the other is uh, the institution then there is what is called as this dvv partners dvv is validation Valid, uh, verification and validation of data that is data verification and validation that is what dvv stands for who does this data verification and validation nac has uh, shortlisted some agencies who do who does the data verification which data is verified the data you submit in your ssr is verified how is this this is transferred to the data uh, this age dvv uh, agents or dvv service providers to check the data based on the templates you send the minutes of the meeting etc now they should have a now we should have a common understanding between you me and the institution that is what is an extract that is what is called a standard operating procedure now 2.2 metric detail percentage of full time teachers etc list what is the document required for verification they have given list of faculties having this specific instruction to achieve mention number of full time with highest degree year wise etc this is another honorary doctorate not to be included what is not to be included so this is a common understanding between the institution you and the uh, service provider so that they cannot keep on asking more questions then you they can ask 10 more questions whether the phd is from a valid university so he the, the dvv partner has to limit to the sop sop is a standard operating unless there is a serious doubt on many of the claims made by the institution so this is what standard operating procedure means and when you do your self study report please understand your understand for each each of the criteria metrics a standard operating procedure is available generally largely for the quantitative metrics this is for quantitative metrics only you will have this what is called as sop standard operating procedure so you have to go through this so now sir sir can i can you go back to the tamil nadu uh, this one hmm. now you go down a little sir quant matrix you go to the matrix level still still down sir qualitative matrix uh, where uh, questions see now you go down go down a little go down sir still down One minute. 
still dumb still dumb sir. see here you get the dvv clarifications etc see answer before dvv verification answer after dvv verification you have changes there this is where they have cross checked with you this is where they have seen the records and also there is a, what is called as a response when you fill a fill a registry you will get a response that response is what i showed you the number 30 when once you fill up the ssr you will get a response that response you can use against these benchmarks to see that benchmarks i hope you are, you got that the response the number 30 i showed in is the response and these are the changes when after dvv clarifications that has happened so now we can close it, sir. Next slide, please. These are general guidance for HVI. You can look at it. Next slide. These are the outcome documents, how it is the outcome is given, etc. etc. You get a peer team report, you get a overall analysis, recommendations, etc. Next slide, please. This is a graphical representation. This you can also study of graphical representations of free institutions, which will help you. Next, next one. Next slide. These are uh, these are all available in that. One thing you keep in mind: glossary and notes, peer team visit schedule for an institution is about two days. So you have to manage your time well. Declaration. In the declaration, you have to say that the head of the institution gives the declaration. In the declaration, it is important that you load your SSR, etc. from your institutional computer. So the IP address of this system will be uh, will be uh, will be part of the declaration. So it should, you should take care that uh, the IAQA and all that is loaded from your institution. So this is in brief. How do you approach it? One more thing I would like to say at this point. I showed you about weightages. You please concentrate on metrics which higher weightages first. Higher weightages, you may put more concentration. And when you write your qualitative reports, do monetize things. Like for example, you are using solar energy in your campus. Just don't write, we have solar energy. Uh, we have solar energy pan panels uh, mounted on our co college. And uh, you say, because of mounting of the solar energy, how much you save? You put it in, in a monetized form. That gives a better, that you are saying 20% of the cover bill. If you have uh, rainwater harvesting, how much water you have saved? You monetize it and put it in the reports. This monetization helps you because it gives a better impression of what you are doing. Okay, and then once you complete your peer team report, circulate, let everybody knows what goes into the peer team report. It's important so that you are on the same page. When the peer team reports, uh, peer team members talk about the reports in various places because it is like this. Now what happens, the peer team will have a session with the head of the institution, then with the IQAC, then with different departments. If you make contradictory statements at different points in time, then there will be a doubt and you, will may, you may lose marks on this. You may lose marks because there is contradictions and the peer team, when they give the marks, they are not very clear on it. Now, when you go back on the slide, sir, go back, go back, sir, still more, still, 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 one more time, one more. Now you see, one minute, now next slide, sir, next slide. See, metric wise, what is the grading pattern? One, zero, one, two, three, four. These are the four, uh, four levels of grading, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. Every matrix is is, is uh, given grade point based on 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is the grade point. Even a peer team member gives based on the quality, quantitative uh, qualitative data, 
either says one, two, three, or four. He ticks three. He ticks four. In your case, the more the threes and the fours you get, the more better for you. That is, you are on the higher end of scoring. So more you should aim for more threes and fours. That does doesn't mean you should uh, give information that is not true. When you give information, you see whether you are given the right information for the right question. For that for that particular question, you have given the right information. You have not missed it. You may feel something is more important as far as you are concerned. Something is important in your institution as far as you are concerned. But when you look at the qualitative metrics, that the question that is answered to be answered there becomes important because that is where it is scored. So you always look at this. This is what my institution is good at. So you start projecting that. But be also be cautious of the fact it is not that it is what is asked in the qualitative metrics that is helpful for scoring. So when you go for peer team visits, you can even I can give you more tips on that or later maybe the time constraints. I don't want to get into that. So this in this is in essence how do you approach the uh, how to approach preparing of the sense study report. You make seven teams, you make six teams, you look at all these things, prepare well, plan it, have deadlines, work on it, do it first, the, do it right the first time. I feel largely, it shouldn't need, do it more than one or two iterations, it should not take. It will take some iteration, but if you plan it well, not more than two iterations will be required. So with uh, this, I thank you for uh, your patient listening. I thank the authorities of the, uh, the authorities of the college for giving me an opportunity. Uh, and in case of any questions, I will get, I will go back to I will hand over to the host. In case uh, questions are permitted. I am willing to take some questions. In fact, you can show the last slide. Last slide. Uh, you uh, you click this again. You want more? Uh, the name will come. Uh, no, no. Go to the last slide. You click. Uh, now, now you leave it. Now you leave it. See you. Uh, you no, no. Op keep that slide open. See, before I close, I want to show you this. This is an extract of a convocation address by Professor C. V. Raman delivered at convocation BHU in 1926. And you read this. Our universities are so engrossed today with the task of conducting examinations with innumerable meetings of boards and faculties, courts and council senate that we have no time to perform the highest function of a university, which is to stimulate intellectual activity and advanced knowledge. So the lesson is he has said it in 1926. I don't know what he could have said it today. Uh, so you manage things well. You cannot say I don't want it, but you have to manage it better. With this, I think I will close this session. In case you have any doubts, you can come back to me through the institution or my, I think uh, in the first slide, my uh, email ID, etc. is there. Any questions if the host permits some questions to be taken i am absolutely sure. sir absolutely thank you sir it was indeed important information uh, I can take, sorry it may have been a little boring because that is the way it is so it was important it was important to listen uh, now i request all the participants to ask any questions related to the sessions uh, participants can type their questions in the chat box as mentioned earlier yes definitely uh, ppt will be shared to the respective Participants. In fact, most of the information I have taken from NAC manual, it is not just that I have taken it and put it as a PPT. So you can, yeah, I have no issues. You can share, you can share it, but always cross verify with the informations in the manual. Some I have left, Definitely. I have taken from the old manuals to, just to make a contrast so that you are sensitive that things change. Absolutely, sir. Participants, if you have any questions, you can type it on 
you can write uh, any question there is nothing like a right question you can just type wrong question you don't go by that uh, don't worry that is a wrong question or a right question there is nothing like a wrong or a right question in this uh, miss meena nagendra if you are raising hand for a couple of times kindly if you can text the message on the chat box that would be very helpful uh sir we have one question here yeah uh iqac best practice and criteria 7 best practice both are same it is not whether it is both are same or not whether you select this as a best practice see anyway when i come to the session 6 and 7 we will discuss this in little further on this best practice it is what is the best practice you select in your institution what is a best practice there are institutions which thought this is identify this as a best practice and start on that that has also been done or the best practice you have identified now say you have one year away from your accreditation you identify this could be a good best practice and start working on it institutions have done it so it has been both ways like we can discuss it a little further on this so it is not like whether best practice is uh, best practice is uh, can be or not uh, can be or cannot be it is not uh, it is not that it can be iqac practice can also be a best practice it is not necessary that it is not the best practice thank you sir thank you so much uh, we have another question from manjus learning how can sir what is the difference between grievance redressal cell and internal complaint cell see grievance redressal cell and uh, internal so complaint cell on what context you are asking this question what is the context uh, the participants can unmute themselves and ask the questions related to it what is the context hello sir hello sir uh, yeah. good evening Good evening. Myself is Panchana, IKC coordinator. Mm -hmm. So actually, there is a mandatory committees uh, which we need to maintain in our institution, like a grievance redressal cell and internal mm -hmm. complaint cell. Mm -hmm. So I, I was I was not uh, very much clear with the what is the difference between internal complaint and uh, grievance redressal cell. Uh, See, this grievance redressal is grievance of students, grievance of faculty, etc., which needs to be addressed. See, you have to define okay. in case yeah, you that, want. That you have to that, but, but what is the internal complaint then? We'll, one minute sir you have to define that what you mean what are the objectives of this and what are the limitations you define both internal uh, complaint cell means you may restrict it to only faculty or you may say it is it is a it is for only non teaching staff you have to define what it is sir unless you define what it is it you cannot really say what is the difference the difference has to be defined by you grievance redressal cell is a statutory requirement as as prescribed by ugc ugc said there should be a grievance redressal cell but the grievance redressal cell also one of the statutory committees we need to maintain in uh, uh, the yeah, institution you are you are but what is the difference complaints who will come under grievance and who will come no, under internal complaint why do you want an internal complaint cell when you have this cell grievance it's there in the mandatory committee sir in which mandatory committee iaq in uh, while, while submitting iaq yes there is a uh, internal complaint and also a minority you, you define what uh, you define according to your this glossary it is given if it is not given you define it okay okay thank you thank you sir so wherever i want to make a point here wherever it is not clearly mentioned you make your own definition even then you don't want it you can send a, a email to nac but my suggestion is you define it yourself because there is uh, so somebody may have some thought process on this but uh, all uh, gr grievance and internal complaint mechanisms you define what it exactly means you go into you have a search on the ugc also then if you see there are they made a difference you can use it i am not very sure on that thank you sir thank you for your insights
Uh, it is informed to all the participants that feedback forms will be shared after every session. It's totally shared. And certificates will be issued to the participants who will fill the feedback forms. Now I request. Now I request Mr. Gokul C, member IQAC, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, to give the concluding remarks. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's my privilege to uh, to give the closing remarks for the session. Um, it's it was an inaugural session that we started with uh, Dr. Lina Gahane. Uh, she gave an overview about uh, what NAC expects, basically in terms of its uh, uh, contents and the preparations as such. So, um, and uh, uh, Dr. Madhukar, of course. You know, sir, uh, sir is not new to us. Uh, sir is a well wisher of SSMRV College. He's also an external member of IQAC. Very much interacted with us on a lot of academic fronts as such. So, um, sir also gave us about the preparedness, the institutional preparedness, the readiness that we needed to have for the NAC accreditations. So, that was a gist of uh, uh, this. Uh, we, in fact, day one, we have set the tone for the next uh, six days that we are going to have the sessions. So from tomorrow onwards, we'll be focusing on each of the criteria. So today we have set the ball rolling. So we want all the participants with the same enthusiasm that we had uh, today. I hope that we get the same. Now it's my turn to thank the people who made this a reality. Let me thank our chief guest, Dr. Lina Govind Gahane, the deputy, deputy advisor, NAC, who was ready to give, give the opening remarks for this uh, seven-day webinar. Thank you, madam. It was indeed informative a session as to what you covered in it. Let me thank our resource person, Dr. Madhukar B.S., who is a former advisor, NAC, and external member of IQAC, SSMRV College. Sir, in fact, uh, the, the kind of effort that sir has put in to update, to update himself and to ensure that he gives the right set of information, it's really tremendous, sir. Thank you. Thank you once again. And we'll be connecting with sir again for uh, criteria six and seven in the coming days. So please stay connected. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that. I thank all the participants, the heads of various institutions, deans, principals, coordinators, uh, faculty members from across. We had about 444 uh, 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 participants. So with about 200 plus joining today. So I thank each and every one of them who has shown interest from amidst your busy schedule. That is the importance that is given to NAC in the present scenario. Thank you to each and every one of our participants. Uh, let me thank uh, the initiator of the whole process, Dr. Sanil Kumar, sir, who has always, who says yes to all the uh, institutional initiatives that we take. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being the motivator behind this uh, event. Uh, I also thank uh, our director, Dr. Geeta, ma'am, uh, who was indeed a pillar of support for us. Let me thank Dr. M.S. Nagraj, who is a coordinator of IQAC and the head of the Department of Commerce, who has literally handheld us in each and every aspect of making this uh, event a reality, including the minutest of the uh, of the details that we need to go through. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Let me thank our team of uh, people, uh, uh, our organizing team, comprising of Mr. Satish MD, uh, Mr. Yellappa, Shivkumar, sir, uh, Mr. Sh uh, Mrs. Uh, Shakila, Mrs. Vidya, Dr. Padma, uh, uh, Ms. Smita, Mr. Arun Kumar, Mr. Sanket Diwan, who was also the uh, who was also the comp uh, comparer for today, and uh, the technical support rendered by Mr. Ravi Raj. Uh, with this, uh, as I said, it's only the first day. It's only an icing on the cake. We need we need uh, with, uh, we need a, a few more days to kind of connect with uh, on, on uh, in detail about it. So, with this note, tomorrow criteria one, we'll have Dr. Deepak Jarolia. The professor and IQAC head, Prestige Institute of Management and Commerce, and uh, from Indore, who would be connecting with, with us on Criteria 1. So tomorrow, 3.30, we'll connect back. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you, Sanket, for the compare, wonderful comparing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. We'll end the session now. Thank you. The recording of the same will be shared in our uh, YouTube channel. Thank you.